welcome to this trauma registrar training on importing EMS data in the Oregon Trauma Registry. We're going to show you a new feature that we have developed for Trauma 1 in the Oregon Trauma Registry that allows you to search for and import uh, information from EMS patient care reports while you're filling out your trauma record. Uh, we hope that this will be a time saver for you and also uh, allow you to access uh, information that may have been hard to access in the past. Uh, once you import the information from a patient care report, uh, you have full capabilities still to make edits to that information if there's something that you need to correct. Okay, so I'm going to start out by uh, logging into the system. And I'm going to start a new patient record. Okay, this is the familiar first screen of your uh, patient information, patient demographics. Uh, you'll notice there are two new buttons on this screen that we're going to look at today, link PCR and unlink PCR. In order to find EMS data that uh, is relevant to your trauma record, you have to enter some basic information in the trauma record first. Uh, you have to enter the last name of the patient, the first name, the date and time that they arrived at your hospital, uh, the patient's date of birth. Uh, the system will auto-calculate their age, and finally uh, their sex. Uh, so once you've entered these basic pieces of information right here, then you can attempt to find EMS records that match this patient, uh, with this birth date, with that, with that sex, uh, who was treated by EMS around the time that they arrived at your hospital. So I'm going to click the Link PCR button. And at this point, uh, the Oregon Trauma Registry is searching through records that, that it has received from Oregon's pre-hospital data system. And it's looking to see if there's any uh, records that match this patient on this particular incident date. And in this case, it found three matching records. Uh, we'll take a look at each of these three records to see the information that it shows us in this uh, selection screen. Uh, this first record here, um, first of all, the agency responding in all of these cases was a test agency called EMS and Trauma Systems. Uh, but you'll see actual agencies listed here. This first record, uh, we can see that uh, it was a 911 response to the scene uh, that was earlier that morning, and the role of the unit was a non-transport rescue. If we scroll sideways, we can see some additional information about this uh, particular record, uh, including the, the incident zip code and county, and the disposition of that EMS call. In this case, the patient was treated and transferred care to another EMS unit. And we also have the incident number from the call and the name of the unit that responded. So that first record was uh, a non-transport 911 responder that showed up at the scene and provided some patient care and then handed the patient off to a transporting unit. This second record we see has a destination, uh, Providence Newburgh Medical Center. So this represents the record for the scene transport. And we can see that the service requested was a 911 response to the scene, and the, the role of the unit was a ground transport. We could scroll sideways and see additional information. Finally, we see a third record where the destination was OHSU. So this represents the interfacility transport. It also went by ground uh, from Providence Newburgh up to OHSU for a high, higher level of trauma care. Uh, today, we're pretending that I'm at OHSU and I'm the trauma registrar there uh, entering my, my trauma record. So uh, being the trauma registrar at OHSU, I may be interested in all three of these records because uh, the first record from the non-transport rescue may have the first set of vital signs that was taken at the scene. Um, the second set would have some additional, uh, the second record would have additional information from uh, work that was done by the transporting agency from the scene. And the third record would give me information about the interfacility transport that brought the patient to my hospital. 
I can choose which of these records I want to import by checking one of the boxes. Or if I check the box in the top left, it will select uh, all three of the records. So I'm going to select all three records for this demonstration and click the link button down in the bottom right. And now the Oregon Trauma Registry is uh, linking those patient care reports and bringing in some information from those reports into my trauma record. Okay, so it says that they were linked successfully. I'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll see what this does for us. If I go on to the incident page of the report, <clears throat> I'll see that some information has been filled in here. Uh, the location type, uh, the zip code, <clears throat> and based on the zip code, we get the city, county, state, and country of the incident location. Occasionally you'll see some stuff like this where the injury date time didn't come in, uh, that, that didn't exist on the EMS record, so you may have to fill in some gaps yourself, uh, gaps like that. Uh, depending on the type of call, you would also see uh, information about protective devices. Those would come in. Uh, in this case, there were none used. And if it was a car crash, uh, you would see information about airbag deployment uh, coming in here as well. Finally, at the bottom of the page, if it was work-related, you'll see that, and you'll see the patient's occupation and industry. So that's the information from uh, the pre-hospital reports that comes into the incident page of your report. Now, if any of this information is wrong, you can simply fix it in your report, and uh, when you do, it will have no impact on the original patient care reports over in the EMS data system. Uh, the EMS agencies are responsible for any corrections to those original reports but you can correct anything that you need to in your trauma record. Okay, next, uh, let's go to the pre-hospital page and see the information that has been imported here. Uh, pretty much everything, yeah, everything on this page uh, gets imported from the pre-hospital records. We can see uh, some information here from, um, uh, from the times from one of the units. Uh, just for clarity, I'm going to click the button over here that changes us to a scrolling window there. And we see, indeed, we have three records in this scrolling window. And each record represents one of those patient care reports, one of those units that responded to the call. Um, we see that two of them were ground transport units, and the other one was um, that non-transport uh, uh, response to the scene. We have uh, the date and time they were dispatched, when they arrived at scene, uh, when they departed the scene. Of course, this record from the non-transporting unit does not have a scene departure time because they did not transport. Uh, we will also have the time that they arrived at the hospital. Uh, that is one last um, gap that's being taken care of before this goes to production. And some additional information at the end. In addition to the EMS times, we also have EMS vital signs. You can see one set of vital signs here, and you can click these buttons to uh, flip through the various sets of vital signs. Uh, or if I click for the scrolling window, uh, we can see the vital signs here. Uh, one, two, three, four, I think five uh, sets of vital signs. So there were three patient care reports, but some of those patient care reports had multiple sets of vital signs, and all of those sets will come in. Again, you can decide if you want to keep all of those sets of vital signs or just keep, uh, uh, keep the first set or the last set or what, you know, whatever it is that you need. You can make edits to these vital signs if you think that something was wrong. Over on the left, we get procedures that were done by EMS. Uh, we see an airway procedure or airway opened and a pressure dressing application. We see a procedure here in the middle that is blank on the text. Uh, that means this is a procedure that is recognized in the pre-hospital EMS data system, uh, but it is not recognized in the Oregon Trauma Registry. So you will occasionally see some things like that, and uh, we should work over time to make sure we can clean those up. <clears throat> also, you may occasionally see a blank procedure come in here like this, uh, and those can be deleted if they need to be. Uh, you'll see that uh, vehicle, vehicle, pedestrian, or other uh, injury risk factors have been filled out. 
as well as trauma center criteria. And finally, whether or not there was cardiac arrest uh, during the pre-hospital phase of the uh, incident. So that's the information that comes into your trauma record when you link a patient care report. After I've imported EMS data and verified, made any corrections that I need to make, I would uh, continue my way through the regular trauma record, uh, filling out additional information as I go. Now there's one other feature that will be part of this integration, and that is that certain information from your trauma record will actually flow back to the EMS data system so that the EMS agency will have some information about the outcome of the patient. Uh, the injury e-codes that you provide on the incident page, the ED disposition and the first systolic blood pressure, uh, hospital procedures, the injury ICD-10 codes from the injuries page, and then from the discharge page, the hospital exit date time, discharge disposition, uh, total ventilator days, and ICU length of stay days. That information will flow back to the EMS agency. Uh, we used the link PCR button today. There's also an unlink PCR button. So if you have imported some patient care reports into your trauma record and you realize that one of them was imported by mistake, uh, you can manually delete things out of your record, or you can come back here and just unlink the PCR that you brought in accidentally. So I'll click Unlink PCR, and it shows all three of these PCRs that I have previously uh, linked. And if there was one of them that I decided should not have been linked, I can go ahead and choose that one and click Unlink. So I'm going to do that. Um, at this point, the system actually takes a little while to do this unlinking. Uh, so we'll let it do its thing. Uh, it'll probably take 20 or 30 seconds uh, to complete the unlink. So that's how we would unlink a PCR. If you do unlink a PCR, uh, in addition to pulling that PCR data out of your trauma record, it also uh, pulls it back out of um, the information that was being sent to the EMS data system. So that all that trauma outcome data uh, would no longer be available to the EMS agency uh, that submitted that record. This PCR was unlinked successfully. And so if we uh, go back to the pre-hospital page, uh, then we'll see here that um, we only have two records now uh, because we took one of them out uh, and unlinked it. Also down in the vital signs, a little hard to see in the scrolling window, but we have fewer sets of uh, vital signs um, because we removed a record. Looks like we only have three sets of vital signs now. So that's what the unlink does for us. So I appreciate uh, the time that you took today to attend this training and uh, hope that this will be very helpful for you, not only as a time saver, but also to improve data quality, uh, and look forward to hearing your feedback as you start using this new feature.